how many plays should a reviewer have under their belt before reviewing a game? Which I want to bring this up because it's kind of an interesting topic. I review games. Matt, you play games. Yes. You watch reviewers. Mm -hmm. I've watched reviewers. I still watch reviewers. But I've seen a lot of people talking about how many times can you should you play that game, you know, or should you disclose that? Like, do you think they should disclose how many times they play a game before doing the review or in the review? Sorry. I don't think it's necessary. I'd like to think that it's someone that reviews it all the time has got enough of a idea of, you know, just games in general. Yeah. Games in general. I think the only thing that m might matter is, um, the whole it's best with. Yeah. yeah and you know, that, that would be the only time it's like, don't tell me it's best before when you haven't played it before. If you, you, you can't just guess that it might be better. Uh, and really, I think that's probably more a board game geek thing anyway, because you have thousands of people voting on that or, or whatever in the, um, the players suggested right with or whatever. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think that as a reviewer, I should play it enough times to where I have the, uh, the good idea of the game. Like I should know the game. I should know the rules. I should know there's no mix ups in the rules, but I don't need to play a game. Like say for instance, I was playing a game and there was a broken card. I, I almost don't even need to identify that the first th five or six plays. Like if I don't come to it, I don't see that combo being extremely broken because maybe it's not like uh, glaringly obvious, right? Some games you play, that is a broken card. Right. 100%. Now, I think that if we think a card's broken, we definitely need to play it again a couple times to see if it continues to be broken or if it's just one of those cards that, will, like the first play, it seems more powerful. You know, like some worker placement games, spots might be seeming more powerful than others, but we're just not utilizing the other ones in, in a good way. Right. And I think you need to play it enough to where you kind of understand it. But you don't need to... I don't think reviewers are experts on a game. Right? They can't be. Right. No, right. The the designer and the developers... They can be an expert on need five be. games a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, they were, if they're going to do that... I mean, for the most part, all these reviewers are doing this as a hobby. As right. a side thing. They have a normal job. A couple of them are doing it and they're getting paid for it or whatever. Or they're getting, you know, Kickstarter uh, funding for it and stuff. But even those people... They're, they're, the amount of games they're reviewing is just getting larger and larger, so they're not going to play a game 50 times. No. As, as a matter of fact, it's funny to think about it in the video game perspective. Do you think somebody plays Fallout 4 50 times? <laughs> no. They can't. I, there's no way. Yeah. Especially right now. I, you know, I've, I've thought about that with uh, gaming reviews that you see in magazines. How many hours can you log on Fallout? And do you think Four. they beat every game? No, they no. don't. There's no way. They get a general idea, they write it up, and that's about it. Sometimes you can tell that that's all they did, because after you play <laughs> the game and you read the review, maybe, and it's like, oh, they're not even mentioning some of this other stuff that right. maybe they should have. They probably only played, like, the first quarter of the game and then wrote a review on it. So, Or, or even that, like, take it in the, the, the movie realm. Like, do you think a lot of movie reviewers go and watch the movie five or six times before they review it? No, they're one time. Oh, Should yeah. Should be good. I think most people is one time. Yeah. I mean, first off, it's a static thing anyway. I mean, nothing's going to change by you watching it again. Right. Other than, like, if you just miss a lot of clues that they built up to, then you can go back and watch it for that. But I think with board games, I think as long as somebody's played it at least, with the, at least once with most the player amounts, uh, or if it's a short game, Maybe a lot more times, but I mean, Twilight Imperium three, yeah. we haven't played that. So, but I guarantee you, if I played it one time, I would probably be okay. Right. To to say stuff about it, my opinion, the World of Warcraft board game, right? That game took us fourteen hours to play. Yes. With the expansions, all the expansions and six players, that was crazy. I've never played that two players. You play it two players, each player gets three guys. It's going to be the same game. It's the same game, right. Right, nothing's changing. So I don't need to play it two players to make a judgment on how I think the game plays with the amount of people. So, you know, I think it just depends on the the game. If it's a team-based game or something like that. And I don't even really think I need to play it with people who aren't gamers and whatever. You know, I've heard some people saying, well, you need to play with casual people. And you need to play with the experts of games. What are they, test group for the... Right. The... Uh no, what's the word? The I'm designer? The designer, yeah. No, no, we ain't testing anything. We're just playing it to see if it's fun. And I think that people need to focus more on the opinion of that person and what games they like 
And then as you play games they like, you're going to find out what you don't like or what you don't have in common with that reviewer. And you're going to be able to tell, should I really take this into consideration or not? You know, because I know that this guy loves take that games. I probably don't need to be watching all his reviews if right. he's reviewing tons of those games and be excited about it. And other games that aren't take that, he doesn't really care for. Right, yeah. If he's not heavily into uh, worker placement games or if you want to call them Euros, which I kind of want to ban that. I don't like Euro Gamer. Yeah. You know, and Ameritrash and all that stuff. That is so dumb. All that does is is bring down the hobby. There's nothing good about that. Off that rant, no. Soapbox, <laughs> if somebody isn't really heavily into deep strategy games and they review a deep strategy game and don't like it first off why did you even review it right you, you know like that's an interesting topic that I say that because i've reviewed abstract games and i'm like look i'm not an abstract gamer i don't really care for abstracts i play armadora i don't remember if you played that uh no but i know what game you're talking about yeah yes. it's a little board you you map off areas with little fences and then whoever you put your guys down and whoever has the most guys in that fence basically gets the gold right or you split it up, and at the end of the game, whoever's the most skilled wins. The theme doesn't even matter. The theme works because it's like, you know, you shoot an arrow, it gives him negative one. Well, you didn't really shoot an arrow, you just put a negative one on him. That just happens to be your special ability. Right. But for me, like, it was a fun game. I didn't mind it. But I'm not going to trash it or think anything less of it because it's a abstract. Same thing with, like, watching movie reviewers. This is where I could go on a tangent, but I'm not. If you are going to review an action film please be into action movies. Yeah. You at least need to like the genre of something that you're reviewing. If it's a product and you're reviewing curling irons and you have no hair, <laughs> right? like be into something or be able to utilize something that you're reviewing. Or at least thing. disclaim that. You know, you know, cause there's, I'm not, you know, just going with the movies, ridiculous over the top action. I could care less for. So sometimes I'll tell someone at work, like, I didn't care for that movie, but I'm not into that kind of movie so much, so don't really take my opinion. Right, and that's what I said. I'm not a much of an abstract gamer. This game was okay, though. But I was judging it from a mechanism standpoint, right? Not because of, oh, the game has no theme, it's garbage. Well, chess has no theme, really. I mean, sure, it had an idea of a theme about, you know, warfare and stuff. Right. But I'm not going to harp on it in a review because it has no theme on it. It's, I mean, that wasn't the thing. And you got to take in context of when it was made and who it was made by and things like that. So I can't really trash a game, you know, on theme if, you know, it's an abstract game. Right. So anyway, that's, yeah. I don't really have anything else to say about that. I mean. I'm done. Yeah. We're done with this. Yes.